Is that my bloody Caesar? Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. These are so good. One of the benefits to growing up in the time when you take pictures of all the food you make is that you have pretty good documentation of the first time you tried making something. I executed my idea of Hong Kong style chicken and waffles on April 12th, 2015. And it was this simple brunch idea that started me on my path to third culture cooking. Living in Detroit, there are many opportunities to have chicken and waffles. Everyone has their favorites and mine happened to be a favorite of a few regular Sunday brunch visitors who always appeared when I shared pictures of them on my Instagram. Third culture food is different from fusion cooking because it requires an in-depth understanding of two types of cuisine. One you were exposed to through your family and the other you learned by living the greater portion of your life immersed in it. I count this dish as such a thing because I brought deep cuts in the form of Hong Kong egg waffles, as well as infusing Chinese spices into the maple syrup to create an experience that is as unique as mine. The fried chicken marinade is one that I grew up with, and though it wasn't in the form of karaage, the flavors remained the same. This wasn't just some guesswork, there was no experimentation here. I made this dish once, and it's remained the same since the first time I made it nearly 10 years ago. The origins of chicken and waffles in America go as far back as the 1600s and became popular in 1789 when Thomas Jefferson brought some waffle irons to America from Amsterdam. The first iterations came in the form of fried catfish and waffles, but eventually fell out of favor to fried chicken because unlike catfish, you can get chicken year round. The Pennsylvania Dutch would serve their fried chicken and waffles with gravy in the 1860s. How this dish entered in as an American soul food staple is passed on in stories. There are debates over its origins, but it was wildly popular in African American communities in LA, Chicago, and New York by the 1930s. I would have very much liked to have been able to experience a plate at Wells Supper Club. I had my first taste of chicken and waffles in Detroit at Woodward and Grand River at what was the Breakfast House and Grill, now a place called the Hudson Cafe. I was in love with their chicken and I was in love with this combination. Salty and sweet, crunchy and soft, the contrasting flavors and texture did a lot to satisfy my Asian palate, which oftentimes preferred contrast over the typical layering that you usually find in Western cooking. I haven't had yet the opportunity to try chicken and waffles at Cuzzo's, which I hear is very good. When I thought to make this dish, I immediately thought of the waffles I used to eat as a kid in Hong Kong. Street vendors would make these on the sidewalks in their gray dingy cart, and they'd give them to us in brown paper bags. Hong Kong waffles aren't the same as regular waffles. They're like the opposite of waffles. Instead of square indents, you have rounded bubbles joined by a thin and crispy layer of cooked batter, almost like a twill. The bubbles were cakey and soft and sweetened with custard powder, and they were mildly sweet and eaten on their own. The bubble tore off from the waffle, which made it an easy walking snack. It's definitely not anyone's chicken and waffles that you can get around here, but it was very popular. My friend Tiff once told me to enter at a local competition with this, but I wasn't trying to let anybody know about me like that at the time. I wasn't trying to be really known by anyone at all. Now look at me on YouTube with my damn TikToks. You're going to need a Hong Kong style waffle iron for this. You can get them on Amazon, and I'll link some in the description, but otherwise the ingredients should be pretty easy to find. First thing you do is prep your chicken. Take chicken thighs with the skin on and cut them into small pieces. Keep the pieces even so they finish cooking at the same time. Compile your marinade and let the chicken sit there for an hour. No more than that because the fish sauce is very strong and will make your chicken too salty very quickly. After an hour, drain it of its marinade and let the chicken rest on a tray so the excess marinade air dries. During the marinating process, you can start to work on the batter. It's almost like every basic waffle batter except with the addition of custard powder. Custard powder can be found online and I'll link to that too, but I also found that you'll have luck finding them at African grocery stores as well as some Greek and Lebanese grocery stores. The waffle should be sweet, so don't be afraid to add more sugar than the recipe says. The chicken is salty and it's all brought together by the maple syrup, so a sweet waffle that's tasty on its own will work for this. Once the batter has been mixed, cover it with a plastic wrap and let that sit in the fridge for an hour. Now during this time, you can make the maple syrup. I always use a lot of Szechuan peppercorns because I like that buzz tingle and the peppercorns themselves have a citrus note to them that is lovely in maple syrup. Use as many or as little chilies as you like, but just remember that sweet counteracts spicy, so if you want your syrup to be hot, you need more than you think. Just be mindful. Don't hurt yourself on the first go, that would be embarrassing. This recipe uses a dry batter fry, so I use a mix of 50% tapioca starch and 50% potato starch seasoned with salt and white pepper. Heat up your oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and dredge your chicken in the starch so it gets a good solid coating and fry. 
You can fry up all your chicken first and then keep it warm in the oven on low. The chicken fries fast because the pieces are so small. Cut your first few pieces from each batch to get an idea of how fast it takes to cook based on how large your pieces are. Finally, just know that the rule of pancakes also applies to waffles. Generally, your first one is gonna suck. It might stick to the iron or be crusty. Just have faith knowing that every subsequent waffle will get better and better. Believe in yourself. You can do this. I don't know who the hell you are, but I believe in you. When you bring everything together, my favorite thing to do is tear off little pieces of the waffle and then make tiny fried chicken sandwiches with them. It really ensures that you have the perfect amount of everything and who doesn't want the opportunity to eat over 10 fried chicken sammies in one sitting. Once you're over the novelty, you can tear up all the bubbles of the waffle at once. Take a fork and just stab yourself a fried chicken sandwich in the order of waffle, chicken, waffle, and then dunk it in a dish of the syrup. Once you've experienced this, you may take a moment to figure out how it is you are going to thank me. This dish was going to be my Saturday and Sunday star. When I was working on my restaurant before COVID hit, I'd have variations of this, serving it with whatever was in season like summer sun gold tomatoes or maybe spring greens. But since that's not happening anytime soon, I might as well let y'all try it if you're willing to put the work in. Believe me, it's worth it. Oh.